assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 5 today we are going to cover agency theory under governance that is section b of your sbl syllabus and from your kaplan textbook this chapter comes under chapter 7 from section 10 onwards and for your sbl uh, from the exam point of view this agency theory is very very important you need to know it all the concepts of agency theory okay so let's start in this video we are going to focus on the following things what is agency theory what are the key concepts of agency theory examples of pre, uh, principal agent relationships agency cost what are the uh, solutions to it need for corporate governance and the stakeholder theory so there are two theory one is agency theory one is stakeholder theory and this is very simple it's not at all difficult to understand from the point of understanding it's very easy it will not even take me 10 minutes to finish this lecture okay but the reason i will be going a bit slow because uh, this concept is very important for sbl okay i don't want to rush through it and even from your earlier studies for example your f1 you must uh, you must be familiar with this principal agent theory okay so this is basically like a revision it's not a new thing okay so that's a good thing i guess about sbl that most of the things you have already studied in some other subjects some other papers you have gone through so things would be easy okay so let's start with what is agency theory okay so it all starts with two parties okay one is known as the principal in this case for example shareholders okay let's take shareholder as the principal okay and then he employs directors or senior level manager okay anything it could be anything this is just for an example he employs someone that is known as agent principal employing agent shareholder employing director okay and to perform why are they employing to perform task okay whose task principal's task on the behalf of shareholders so directors are performing the shareholders job it's like you are hiring someone to perform your job okay and as a result the director is accountable to the shareholder that means he's answerable you just cannot give the task uh, your task and just to be blind you have to have a careful watch okay at the end you have to ask them questions they are accountable to you so your agent is accountable to the principal so in short this is all what is agency theory you are hiring someone to do your job someone is accountable to you okay on behalf of you they are performing okay that this is it everything is built from this concept now why is this why agency theory came because as you saw from history okay the evaluation of the business the type the structure changed earlier it was sole trader as i told in my uh, previous lecture manager is uh, doing the, uh, like there was one person he is owning he's running it so there was no agency theory there you are not hiring anyone to perform your task but as soon as the your task increased the pressure of increased it's not possible that one person can do everything your business needs to grow your company needs to grow so in order to expand you need to hire someone over the time so you are hiring someone so because you are hiring someone there's a separation of ownership and control yesterday i've explained this in my previous lecture separation of ownership and control the main reason is this this is why we are studying agency theory agency theory steps uh, stems from there only separation of ownership and control someone is having the control someone else is having the ownership so that person is different is controlling and owning that's why agency theory that's why corporate governance that's why all the issues are there otherwise there will be no issue okay so that's it what is agency theory now how agency theory is uh, coming under corporate governance how they are linked yesterday we studied uh, the basics of corporate governance principles of corporate governance now with that knowledge we are linking this to the agency theory okay we are over with agency theory um, it's not a big theory it's that that's it that graph 
you just need to understand okay so basically agency theory will help you okay it will help uh, you to understand why various uh, parties take the actions that they take why employees is behaving in a certain way why the director in a company is behaving in a certain way agency theory will help you to decide that okay agency theory says company owned and managed by same people okay then what happens so this is just an explanation of what i've explained before earlier owned and managed by same person later what happened you want to expand because you want to expand okay that means earlier there was no term known as limited liability you are fully liable you have to sell your personal assets but later as you are growing the limited liability came into the picture that means it was all trader then punish then came components right where we have limited liability so because we have limited liability what happens we are delegating someone to run the company on our behalf managers agents so because of that separation of goals goals are different the main reason is the goals of the manager is running your company and you the shareholder is different it's not the same if it was the same then there would be no agency theory then there would be no agency problem we have to go through but because we as an individual we do have different goals we don't have same goals okay that's why agency problem that's why it's an agency problem managers will be having short term goal they will be worrying about their bonuses shareholder on the other hand they have worried about the maximization long term maximization shareholder maximization it's different that's why agency problem comes so we have to know what are this agency problem and also the solutions we have to know in this lecture okay basically in order to protect all the stakeholders because of limited liability okay so now before going to it you need to know some terms some definitions in agency theory okay first agent agent is employed by the principal okay we all know second agency it's a relationship between a principal and an agent so a relationship between a principal and an agent is known as agency relationship agent is the one who does your work agency is the relationship and agency cost okay what is it whatever the cost that you incur to monitor your agent the principal incurs this cost mostly it is known as agency cost because you are monitoring you have to monitor no if you are hiring someone to do your job there should be some uh, mechanism to monitor also that they are doing they are actually doing the work given to them or not okay why because normally it's as it's an assumption okay that they will not be acting in the good faith they will be working for their own self interest not your self interest if you are hiring someone so for that agency cost will be incurred next accountable so this terms you have to know okay because it's very easy to get confused when you see in your exam you will understand this better agency cost agency agent accountability what do you mean by accountable agent becomes accountable to the principal you have to answer the principal principal will be asking questions from the agent because you are you are accepting the task you are saying that okay i'll be able to, i'll be the one who will be carrying your task on your behalf so if anything goes wrong you are answerable okay accountable the term is known as accountable next fiduciary responsibility this is very important okay fiduciary responsibility what does it mean it is agent who has this fiduciary responsibility towards their shareholder means principal that they are acted they are appointed to act in the best interest of the shareholder even by the company law also company law also says to act in the best interest of the shareholder okay it's your fiduciary responsibility number one responsibility yes as a director as an agent you have other responsibilities also but your fiduciary responsibility is you have to act in the best interest of the shareholder fiduciary means the trust that is given to you okay you are taking care of the trust that is given to you right so best interest of the shareholder stakeholder stakeholder 
is someone who can affect your organization or who can get affected by the activities of the organization it could be either way okay agent objectivity okay at the end of the video we are going to study stakeholder theory also where we are going to take other stakeholders but in the agency theory we are talking most about shareholders and uh, shareholders right one type of uh, stakeholder not all agent objectives okay what are the objectives what what could be the objective of an agent maybe they want high salary high bonus or some status okay so this differ from the principal objective what is it maximization of shareholder that's why all this issue okay and some agency cost okay these are some of the most important agency costs like external audit fee you have to pay the auditor to audit your company why because audit is checking you know your financial statements how will you know whether your managers are doing their job or not through the financial report and those financial report are checked by whom auditor so for auditor to check you have to give them the audit fee that's why external audit fees are cost to you agency cost okay if you are the one who are running your company also uh, owning it right there would be no you don't have to incur this cost agency cost right because it's your company you are running it you will be obviously acting in the best interest for the company now attending meetings is another type of course you have to attend meetings to know what's happening you have to read annual reports again it's a time everything cost means it's not monetary only it could be non monetary also maybe you are taking time your time is you are uh, you are consuming time right your time is being wasted you are spending time to read the uh, annual report it's that is also a cost okay you are meeting with someone you are taking time to meet with someone it's a cost okay now you are going to go through some examples of principal agent relationship it's not only one type of relationship there could be many types of principal agent relationships the main ones are starting with shareholder and director because mostly whenever we think about principal agent it's all the shareholder and director it's not like that we have others also other type of categories also but mostly the thing is most of the time it is asked for shareholder direct right this is very commonly asked so here principal has to find ways to ensure that agents are acting in the best interest okay we have seen in the past also that there are some high profile collapses okay why reason because of agency cost sorry the agency problem the, the directors they are being very dominant known as fat cat director okay they became they grew so powerful right they might be uh, taking the advantage of their powers powers that they are given so because of this company collapsed right now various reports are been published okay because of this due to high profile collapses remember when high profit uh, collapses happens it's not just the company that is suffering the whole system the whole economy is suffering that's the reason we are studying this corporate governances and agency relationship and all those things if the impact was so small we wouldn't be taking so much of time to study all this because the impact is so massive the economy the society is getting impacted by this okay so various reports have been published why to solve this issue the directors do not take advantage of their powers in order various reports are being published legislations are there rules are coming up in uk and us so that they can control the stakeholders sorry the stakeholders can uh, control the board of directors okay through this various legislation and all those things next type of category is shareholder and auditor shareholder is the principal auditor is the agent okay you are hiring auditor auditor is your agent the the auditor's main thing is to give a audit report about the company okay so because they are checking it's very important that they are independent from the board of directors the the auditor It's very important for the shareholder. 
okay because it 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 will have an impact on the audit quality if you are not independent okay because most of the time right auditors will be close to board of directors because they are working there right and if it's for many years obviously they'll be having a familiarity thread they are being very familiar with each other so this will have an impact on the shareholder for the shareholder from the shareholder's point of view okay so auditor needs to be independent now so because of this close relationship shareholders will be questioning right so because independence is maintained what what should, what could be done you have to introduce better controls better standards need to be introduced there who audits the auditor for example auditor is the one who is auditing the company right but who is there who is auditing this auditor things like that right you can hire someone to audit them also the auditor now other countries see in other countries you also have to take that under principal agent relationship okay these are some examples in germany okay we have two tiered board later in uh, the later lecture we are going to cover all this two tier board multi tier board what it means unitary board right two tier board means we have two level of board okay for example executive non executive things like that so two tier board in germany so this allows employees to have a formal say in the running of the company that means employee also can have a say in the company that means the agent and in japan it is more like we are taking the we are negotiating with the interested party more like negotiation so it's different you see the styles are different and in us there's a much greater likelihood of the debt holder or the major creditor being represented on the board now let us move on to the agency cost we went through what are the agency problem okay they might not be acting in the best interest they might be acting in their own interest the agent so because of that we have to incur some agency cost in order to monitor them okay so it could be in terms of monitoring the money or the resources that are consumed or the time taken normally cost is borne by whom principal principal has to incur this cost but sometimes it could be the agent also okay why has the agent spends time and resources on certain activities sometimes agent is the one who spends time and resources on certain activities let's not go deeper in that but it's not important but sometimes it could be that also agent is incurring this cost but normally it is the principal okay indirectly agent also can some cost will be there for agent also residual loss before we go in the examples of agency cost let us see what is residual loss this is an additional type of agency cost for example when uh, directors are furnishing themselves with expensive cars and planes private jets and all those things okay this is a loss for the shareholder direct loss for the shareholder it's not giving any impact why because some agency cost is there to reduce the impact of the agency problem right you incur those costs for example audit fee you hire you are getting a good quality audit report it's good for you okay your reputation and everything is giving a benefit that cost is giving a benefit but this furnishing them uh, with expensive cars and all the disadvantage is it's a loss it's a complete loss is not going to give you any benefit to the shareholder that's why it's a residual loss okay that cost is not giving any benefit it is and remember this cost expensive cars and all is not in the remuneration package okay it's beyond that remuneration package for the director now let us come to the examples of agency cost okay for example incentive schemes and remuneration packages for directors sometimes you may have to change the remuneration package for the director in order to control them if the executive director's salary is very high or the bonuses mostly it is the bonuses that uh, 
is very high okay because salary is very easy for you to check but bonuses and all is not so hard it's it's not so easy okay because their bonuses might be linked with some performance target and uh, they might manipulate the performance target and get the bonus okay so that is easy to manipulate salary and all it's fixed you can easily check how much they are receiving and all that's why most of the time they don't try to do anything with the salary basic salary fixed salary they touch the bonus part and those things so remuneration package you can change okay you can bring more effective remuneration package that will um, motivate the director also to work better for the company right so agency problem will reduce or annual report okay cost of managing providing this data annual report data and all or risk management analysis cost of meeting with the financial analyst or the shareholder you are meeting also it's a cost right your time is going cost of expect accepting higher risk okay sometimes you have to accept higher risk than share what shareholders would actually do so it's a cost the cost of monitoring behavior okay maybe management audit you can have so this also this all are cost to control the agent now we went through the cost okay every problem has a solution okay every problem has a solution in this one so this also has some solution you cannot bring it to the zero level but at least you can drop down to some level so agency problem resolution measures are this you have a meeting okay meetings between the directors and the key institution investors meet the more you meet that there are less chances that there will be any there will be any agency problem you can have voting rights at agm annual general meeting or proposing the resolutions right for vote by shareholders at agm accepting takeovers and divestment of shares is ultimate threat what does it mean that means if you see that agent is not working uh with the shareholder their goal is different they are working completely different way you can threat them that we are going to sell the shares because if the company shares are sold managers will not be there no they will be losing their job so you can threat them like that right so that can help them to work for the benefit of the company up to some extent okay this is will not reduce completely but over a short time this might work and don't memorize this list why because according to your scenario that is given to you you have to answer okay this solutions might not be applicable in your exam but just understand what could be the solutions okay now need for corporate governance why do we need corporate governance sometimes market mechanism and shareholders activity whatever the activity that i have shown before do this attend a meeting auditor high auditor to give a report this will fail market will fail sometimes to monitor the company okay then you need some form of regulation is needed it's not just enough to go by just say that principal is going to uh, have meetings with the agent they are going to hire an auditor will not work you need some form of regulation is needed okay so for corporate governance also there are number of regulations there are there are number of codes of conduct even though these are not mandatory by law still maybe in future they might make it mandatory they are voluntary currently it's your choice willingly if you want to do but it is said that it's better if you do it even though it's comp not compulsory yet it's better you do it why because fear of damage of reputation no if you do it's good for your reputation if you don't do it damages your reputation over a long time so people have fear for that so because of that fear also they will go by the code of conduct they will follow actually comply with the code of conduct the corporate governance code because if the company's governance is weak is weak it is not considered good thing so because of this share price reduce and all those things customers uh, do not want to do any business with that company where governance is weak suppliers do not want 
to deal so think like that right and also there's a thread of delisting some stock exchanges says that you need to comply with it the code of conduct the corporate governance code otherwise you are going to be delisted sometimes it's for to get a listing in the stock exchange is a requirement that you have to comply with the corporate governance code so because of that also we comply so this are some examples of code of conduct okay one is the uk corporate governance code in 2016 okay this is for fca and uk financial conduct authority this code oecd code on ethics this another this is another code okay acca codes this all are corporate governance code okay because these are not rule based they are principle based specific regulations could be there for example on directors remuneration that means maybe they might say that according to this regulation you cannot set your directors remuneration too high or too low there should okay they will tell you things like that and city code on takeovers what are the things you can do on takeovers what are the measures you cannot take we are there on the city code okay these are some examples of code of conduct which are not compulsory but they are voluntary if you do it's good now accountability accountability relates to three things okay accountability could uh, one is accountability means you are acting in the best interest of the shareholder that shows you are accountable next you are giving good information for example audited financial statements you are giving that is also a form of accountability third you are operating with a within a defined legal structure you are going by the law that is also accountability okay now with specific regard to directors this is for directors usually okay they are accountable to whom shareholders okay so they must prove the agent the director they must prove that they are discharging their responsibilities according to the shareholders expectations how how through the financial results if the financial results are good mean what does it mean shareholder uh, directors are doing their job perfectly that's why they are having good profit cash flow is good so financial in form of financial results next clean audit report audit report is uh, unqualified that shows directors are performing good okay and they are also complying with the corporate governance code that is also a form of directors responsibility that they are fulfilling their responsibilities accordingly and if the shareholders they if they do not like what they are seeing then what happens what if they are not getting a clean audit report what if they are not complying with corporate uh, corporate governance code that means the directors are not complying what should shareholders do then they can remove the director and replace them even though this is not uh, not recommended it is always recommended the last step to do removing someone because it's not easy it's not easy to remove director and take another one remember so it takes time till you get a suitable person all those things but if nothing works and not getting any result you have done all the measures all the agency cost you have implied still you are not getting any benefit remove the director remove the director and replace it okay but this is not a practic uh, practical step okay this is the last resort it should be your last resort if there is nothing is working then this are other accountabilities that exist within a company not only from shareholder director let's see manager to director how they are accountable see the day to day operation is uh, day to day operation is usually given to the middle level manager okay this it is it goes from the director to the manager director is not the one who do, who is involved in day to day operation he also delegates some to the manager okay sub level manager so in this case senior managers are accountable to director and how they are accountable how you do you know that they are being accountable through the results of the company the results are good that means they are doing their job perfectly otherwise something is wrong somewhere 
Next category is employees to managers. Okay, same how directors have delegated to managers, managers also can delegate to employees. So it's the same thing, similar thing. Okay. Manager, management to creditor. Managers are accountable to creditor. How? Suppliers will ask the manager. Okay. Uh, they will see whether the company is able to make the invoices on a timely basis or not. They will question. So they are accountable. Next, auditors to shareholders. Okay. Shareholders will see whether the review is conducted, the review that is conducted is independent or not, it is competent or not, or done on an educated basis or not. Okay. And also whether they can rely on that outcome or not. The shareholders will check these things. Okay. So now, with this understanding, let us do one question test understanding three. Test your understanding three. For each of the following scenarios, decide which kind of principal agent conflict exists. Three scenarios are given. Let us read the first. The CEO of a frozen food distributor decides that the company should buy the car manufacturing company Ferrari because he's a big fan of the car. Okay. So CEO. This is the CEO. He is accountable to whom? Shareholder, shareholder, right? CEO and the shareholder. So, what type of conflict it is? First, understand it is shareholder director. Okay. So, okay, in this, it is the scenario that is given. Answer is here in the conflict. Okay. This is the answer. So, here, director is acting in their own interest, not those of the car. He's not working for the benefit of the car, for his own self interest. So, that's a conflict. Conflict is that because he is buying the car manufacturing company Ferrari because he is a big fan of the car, not because it's good for the company or anything like that. Okay, next, an employee discovers that one of the key financial control in his area is not operating as it should and could potentially result in losses to the company. He has not said anything because he does not want to get into trouble. You see. He does not want to get into trouble. That's why he didn't say this is management employee. So here also he's acting in the own interest, not for the company. That's a conflict. Third, financial director decides to gamble 1 million of company money obtained from a bank loan on a football match result. Here also is the same thing. Here is the shareholder director. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, in the second one, I forgot one thing that Manage employee, it could be shareholder director also. Okay, why? Because directors are responsible for ensuring risk and control are managed on behalf of the shareholder, right? So that also that is also a conflict here. Next, bank because because of the loan and the director. So it is the director's responsibility that they manage the fund. Okay, without taking excessive risk, but here they are taking risk, so it's a conflict of interest. Shareholder director, it is a director's responsibility to manage the company assets in the best interest of the shareholder. So he's not managing the company's assets also in the best interest. Second, he's not uh, taking the responsibility to manage the fund also that he have taken from the bank. So in two conflicts. So that's it now. Let us go to the last part of this lecture that is stakeholder theory. Stakeholder theory, the last theory in this lecture. So in this theory, this is very simple. It is just the expansion of agency theory or you could say agency theory is just one form of stakeholder theory because in agency theory, they are just taking one particular stakeholder with one. So one principal, one agent. That agent could be one stakeholder, but in stakeholder theory, they are taking many other groups, not just one. Okay, so in the basis for this is okay that companies are very large. Usually, companies do not operate one to one, they are very large. 
okay and their impact on society is also very pervasive so when they are discharging accountability they, it should go to many sectors of the society not just not just the shareholder that means manager or employee whoever is working should not only be accountable to the shareholder alone just because he have invested they should be accountable to the wider sectors of society more the stakeholders rather than shareholder that means they should be accountable to the customer supplier right so on second this could be an outcome of the agency theory also the stakeholder theory as a result of agency theory how because there is a business case that means there is an argument supporting saying that the a company needs to take care of their stakeholders not their shareholder when they are thinking about their customer they should think about the customer in terms of the quality they have to think about employee motivation if they are not employees will leave also supplier stability how stable your supply is are you having long term relationship right giving you favorable terms or things like that and this is a narrow form of stakeholder theory agency theory is only one to one you could say stakeholder is not one to one so one to many okay even though the principal is the one who is hiring agent okay we might say agent should be accountable to principal but stakeholder theory says agency should be accountable to wider stakeholder to all the types of stakeholders not just the shareholder not just the principal who has hired him so that's why agency theory is very narrow and stakeholder is very broad okay and refer to chapter 9 in kaplan textbook okay for more details on stakeholder we are going to cover stakeholder in my next lecture in detail okay how we have to deal with a stakeholder this is just one theories stakeholder theory is very short but in detail we going to study about stakeholder how we have to manage stakeholders the power interests the man loss matrix and all those things and on stakeholders on your acca website there are technical articles regarding stakeholders the name is all about stakeholders there are two parts to it please go and read it part 1 and part 2 and so this other types of stake uh, this other stakeholders shareholders your employees manager customer supplier creditor community government general public environment animal species and future generation okay so you see why there are many groups so before i conclude everything let us finish the last question that is test understanding 4 test understanding 4 so you are required to discuss the agency cost that might exist in relation to the fiduciary relationship between the shareholders and the company globe line and consider conflict resolution measures now this this is the first test understanding that we are doing where we have professional skills also so slowly slowly they are building you towards the exam style questions illustrate analysis skills when considering the agency cost there are two professional skills okay there are five professional skills in sbl out of the five we are talking about two here when considering agency cost and evaluation skills when considering conflict resolution measures so there are two analysis evaluation now let us read this Found in 1983 as a long-distance phone operator, Globe Line has relied heavily on acquisitions to fund its growth. In the last decade, it has made over 60 acquisitions, extending its reach around the planet and diversifying into data and satellite communication from the phone, internet service, and web hosting. Almost all acquisitions have been paid for using the company's share. This high fuel growth through acquisition strategy has had number of outcomes. One is the significant management challenge of managing diversifying across the world. So it's hard to manage across the world, right? Because there are too many different uh, things, straining manpower resources. So 
what are the management challenges number one managing diversity number two straining manpower the internal audit department has been forced to focus on operational matters simply to keep up with the speed of change so internal audit keep up with speed of change number three three challenges are there shareholders have on the whole welcomed the dramatic rise in the stock price stock price uh, uh, buoyed up by the positive credit rating given by this one so they have got some positive credit rating Globline's favored investment bank who has been heavily involved in most of the accusations receiving large fees for their service okay the investment bank has received large fees recently some shareholders have complained about the lack of clarity of annual reports some shareholders lack of clarity of annual reports and its difficulty in assessing the true worth of a company when results change dramatically period to period due to accounting for accusations Ben Pavan is the visionary charismatic CEO. Over the course of the last three years, his personal earning topped personal earning topped seventy seven million with a severance package in place that includes one point five million for life and lifetime uses of the corporate jet. He has a dominant presence at board meetings with board members, rarely challenging his views. These things are very important. Okay, this talks about the character of a person, the qualities of a CEO. You need to highlight these things with even in your SBL exam. Recently, a whistleblower has alleged financially in property within Globeline. Okay, and institutional shareholders have demanded meetings to discuss the issue. The chairman of the audit committee, himself a frequent flyer on the corporate jet. Okay, so even. The chairman on the audit committees of frequent flyer on the corporate jet has consulted with the CEO over the company's proposed response. Okay, let us read. So when you are writing this answer, remember the requirement has two parts. One is agency cost, one is resolution. So when you are writing it, divide it into two parts. So first subheading is agency cost. Under that, write in different paragraphs, four, five, six, whatever it is. Then the next is conflict resolution, and then accordingly write in paragraphs. Okay, at the end, okay, they will be telling you here how the professional skills you will get. Okay, we'll come to that at the end. Professional skills. Let us first go to the agency cost and make sure that you follow this pattern. Okay, it should not be the other way around. Don't write conflict resolution and then the agency cost. Start with the cost first and then the resolution. Go by the order of the requirement. First, it says discuss agency cost, number one. Then it says consider conflict resolution measure. Whenever they say consider, you have to consider. It's not optional. So first, agency cost. Okay. So. First, you can talk what is agency cost. Then you can talk about residual cost. Okay, we went residual loss or residual cost is the same thing. So first, we'll go by the definition. What are this agency cost? Okay, why it exists? So you can start with the definition. It exists because the trust that is placed by the shareholder on the director. Okay, and they do not trust. They do not go by it. Okay. So first uh, para is regarding that only that they are supposed to work in the best interest, but the lack of trust exists, and then in order to control them, it's a cost, right? Now coming to the residual cost. Number two, second paragraph is residual cost. This is a part of an agency cost. Okay, part of an agency cost is residual cost. Okay, but this cost are. It is not borne by just any director, high caliber director. It is something which is outside the salary. Okay, it is usually a trap. Like you are having a trap to run a successful company by giving them high, high worth of uh, benefits and all, which is outside the normal salary, the remuneration. For example, expensive jets 
you know expensive cars things like that right so in this case in this scenario it is the corporate jet that they are talking about and also some severance pay could be there this could this other residual cost no benefit to the company okay and also another thing could be incentives you can give them incentives so that they are in the best interest of the shareholder in this case incentives could be very large salary okay such as multi million dollar remuneration of the ceo right or it could be stock options could be there so all this are cost okay to give them very high salary to give them the stock options so that the their goal is aligned with the shareholder this are cost for the company now number 3 so they are talking more about agency cost okay this also include cost such as what attempts to control or monitor the organization so give some examples that is just a definition examples could be annual report okay so once you give that annual report you talk about financial statement is one agency cost you have to give uh, evidences from the case study you have to link it with the case study to link means giving evidences from the case study for example in the case study they told that shareholders are they are, are saying that there's a lack of clarity in the financial statements okay so they have complained already shareholders have complained this thing you will get from the case study okay that it's not clear opaqueness means it's not clear it's not transparent the reports so to in order to improve those there's a cost so the cost of improving in this area will ultimately we borne by them say an agency cost one form of agency cost is that so here you will get one mark here you will get another mark agency cost you started with the definition then you are giving example one is financial report and they are saying they are having difficulty so in in order to improve it the clarity it's a cost see how you are linking to the scenario more than the just the knowledge part fourth param large organization that required usually as a part of listing rules to communicate effectively with major shareholder okay so meetings so this are more agency cost like meetings to talk about strategy okay on and in this meeting who can you involve the investment bank okay also the ceo so this will take time as well as money another time now the fifth para hidden cost could be there okay hidden cost means cost which are not normally seen that you are spending more money or things like that not monetary so here it relates to the increased risk taken on by the shareholders you are taking an increased risk by diversifying in so many places it's hard to control so it's an increased risk this is also a cost right and you are relying on someone else to manage an individual's money that's a risk specifically due to the acquisition strategy this is more hard risk increased more already you are giving someone else hiring someone again and acquisition strategy more risky okay conflict resolution so now let us come to the conflict resolution all this for cost so the market provides a simple mechanism for dealing with unresolved conflict that are being able to divert the shareholding back into the marketplace yes you can divert the shareholding back into the marketplace one thing is that it is always available this option to the shareholders okay if they consider that the risk is very great it's greater than the return that they are going to get by the acquisition rather divert the shareholding back that's one strategy next less drastic measure that's a very drastic measure by the way coming to the less drastic measure could be okay increase communication and persuasion possibly via the larger shareholders 
you can either communicate or you can pursue it by the larger shareholder so that organization understands the shareholders concern make sure that the larger shareholders communicate with the organization so they understand the agent understand the shareholder concern better and also they act also on the recommendation so you can thread them by wide scale sale of shares because this will have impact on the manager right on the organization because this will affect the director's share options also remember in the residual laws you are giving share options so this will have an impact there also next accusation is a two way street okay so it might be possible for shareholders to persuade another company to be to take over the accusation see how are you coming with the answer this answer is nowhere that you have studied this comes through understanding the case study better because it's an accusation so you have to talk about things that can stop the accusation from happening okay so things like that so from that knowledge also you can bring answers here it's not always that whatever you studied only for that for example agency cost or agency resolution only you have to answer no there are many ways this is an accusation we are talking about so from to prevent accusation if you know the things the to prevent accusation those also you can write here so it's possible that you can persuade another company to bid to take over the organization but this seems unlikely in this scenario why the situation is dire it does not appear to be terminal okay the situation is still not yet very desperate okay that's what it means shareholder optimism may simply require interested parties to propose the dissolution the interested parties could do that and they can vote at the next agm okay they might include reluctance to reappoint the directors you can you should not appoint the directors again okay you can you can stop doing it who may have a conflict of interest so if anyone is having a conflict of interest with the company don't reappoint them in the as director okay such a conflict may exist with the ceo as well, uh, ceo and the chairman of the audit committee also remember whatever the conflict we are talking about the shareholder and the director can exist between ceo and the chairman of the audit committee because auditor because they are also a principal agent relationship now let us go to the professional skills how can you demonstrate analysis and evaluation see evaluation is basically pros and cons advantages and disadvantages whenever they say demonstrate evaluation means pros and cons pros and cons of what the conflict resolution that you are giving the solutions that you are giving for agency problem what are the pros of this if they go by this what are the cons that is the meaning of evaluation so that's how you show evaluation skills the aim is to consider options rather than the come to one definitive solution don't come to one definitive solution give many options and see weigh that these are the pros of this these are the cons of this and analysis skills means what linking information in the scenario to the agency cost and the relationship between the shareholders and the company okay you are able to link it so that's it for test understanding four and now let us summarize everything that we have covered in this lecture so summary of agency relationship and theories okay so the two theories we studied agency theory and the stakeholder theory agency theory is a narrow form of stakeholder theory okay under agency theory we studied the definition okay the there are conflicts between the two parties the agent and the principal okay then how what relationship it has with the corporate governance the agency theory so the agent, the key function of corporate governance is to protect the principal agent relationship okay it could be any principal agent relationship shareholder director shareholder auditor anything then agent accountability we studied under agency theory that means agent is accountable they are taking task on behalf agent is taking task on behalf of principal so they are accountable to the principal for their actions then we studied the key concepts the terms that you have to know under agency theory what is agent someone who is hired to do a task 
principal's task. Principal, the one who is hiring the agent. Agency, the relationship between the two, principal and the agent. Agency cost, the cost that I incurred to control the agent. Accountability, they are re responsible or they are answerable for their actions to the principal. Fiduciary responsibility, they have to uh, take care of their responsibility, okay, that they are entrusted with. They, have, they owe a duty of care and trust to the shareholder. They have to work for the best interest of the shareholder. That is their fiduciary responsibility. And stakeholders, they have to take care of all the other stakeholders. Right? So that's it for this. And see you in the next video.